Today's episode is going to be a little bit more fight specific and we're going to focus more on lead hand, rear hand, uppercuts and hooks, okay? The straight punch is good because you don't have to think. But in this style, it's going to give you a little bit more freedom to mix angles and be a little bit more intelligent setting up those strikes. Round one is going to be about using the lead hand. Round two will be about finding different ways to find your rear strike on different angles. In round three, we're gonna play in our neutral stance to be able to mix in our hooks, our uppercuts, and be able to move our head, use our legs to get that power and that rotation. All right, so round one is gonna be about using your lead hand. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure our rear hand is planted nice and high so we can defend and we get used to strengthening this muscle, keeping the hand up. So round one, I'm gonna use my footwork. I can stay, but I'm gonna be attacking using my jab on different angles. I'm gonna use repetition, I'm gonna use footwork, I'm gonna use in and out movements, okay? All different setups, different styles, whatever you prefer. A few key combinations that I'm looking for is that repetition from the jab, the hook, the uppercut, okay? I wanna see you use your body to build in that rotation. If you're going for power, you load up a little bit more. When you're going for speed, you rely a little bit more on the shoulder to get that quick touch, okay? So mix up power, okay? Mix with that speed, okay? Boom. The second thing I'm looking for is those repetitive jabs. Jabbing as a single, doubles, and triples. And you can see my footwork moving in, moving out, okay? Using the jab forward and backwards. The third thing I'm looking for is using angles and pivots. Jab, boom, I can pivot, angle, step out, okay? Create those quarter turns, boom, boom, attack to find different angles to exploit your opponent. Round two is setting up the rear hand. And you're looking for different angles with straights, uppercut, hooks, and even subtle changes of angles like throwing I call these the thumb downs, a slight overhand, okay? Uppercuts, body shots, and also putting that rear in combination, okay? Singles just might not be enough. Boom, might double it up, cross, uppercut, hook together. And just like round one, I can throw speed or really load up my body to get that rotation and that power. Try to find different angles in my footwork. I really like using the right hand into the shuffle. Usually when you throw that rear power shot, it comes as a single. But in this round, I want you to put it into combination. Cross, uppercuts, hooks, okay? And push them in different sequences to try to confuse your opponent. Second thing I'm looking for is change how you throw the punch. Sometimes throw horizontal, sometimes vertical, sometimes I throw as an overhand uppercut, okay? Always changing my hand position. I love vertical punches because they sneak through the guard a little bit better. It's smaller than turning horizontal where it's easier to get blocked. The last thing I'm looking for is using those angled shuffles, okay? Especially when I throw that cross, Okay, I can load up that shuffle to close my distance and to get the shot. I can throw it as a double straight if my opponent moves back, boom, boom. But if my opponent stops on that first shot, boom, angled shuffle, I can crack that uppercut. So mix those three different things in round two. Third and final round, we're gonna be in our neutral stance. Here we're gonna focus on using our hooks and getting rotation in our body, okay? The neutral stance is a very good position to be able to get power and rotation, Mike Tyson being the example. Work on turning our core, pivoting our feet to be able to get that power, okay? From this position now, when I throw this hand, I can set up uppercuts, okay? So I'm gonna mix in my hooks and my uppercuts from that neutral position. Three things to look for in round three. The first thing is being able to use the same hand in repetition, uppercut, hook with the same hand. Too many times we get into throwing left, right, left, right. This is where you can mix in the same hand attacking. And you can see how I use the rotation in my body to set it up, hook, I come back, uppercut, come back, hook, okay? And you see how I have a nice wedge, a nice block here to be able to block and fire behind my shield. 
Second thing I'm looking for, okay, is using a little bit of angles and shuffles. So when I'm here, I might want to create an angle to attack up the middle. The third thing I'm looking for is being able to mix in some head movement from this position, okay? So you can see me, you know, bob underneath to be able to attack off of my head movement. Bending our legs, changing levels, that's gonna help you get that power. Because when I sit on my legs, boom, that's when I can really pop up to use that power, okay? So get that little bit of bounce and that squat in your stance. Right. Quarantine training two in the books. A little bit different than episode one, which was more about that repetitive punching, that muscle endurance, okay? Today, still working on that muscle endurance, but it's a little bit more focused and lets you be creative, as well as working on more concepts when it comes to fighting. Using those quarter turns, mixing angles in the punches, head body, okay? Same hand attacking in combination. All right, so there's a lot of things you can work on. But remember, when you do your shadow boxing or any form of training, make sure you have a purpose. Go into the shadow boxing thinking, I'm going to work this. I'm going to work my endurance. I'm going to work on my rotation and my punches or my speed. Okay. Make sure you guys are staying safe, practicing your distance, staying home, and at the same time, practicing your martial arts. And at this time, it's really important to get those visual and mental reps at this way, so when you go back to training, it'll feel like you never skipped a beat.